Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to easily set up your micro bit to accept Bluetooth control from your phone. I'll show you two different apps that you can use on your phone. One of them works on both iOS and Android, uh, and the other one works best on iOS. So let's get going. Okay, so I've already plugged in my micro bit with the USB cable to my PC. Uh, I'm at makecode.microbit.org to use the make code editor so I can build my program with blocks. I'm in the Chrome browser. The tricks I'm going to be doing in just a minute only work well with Chrome and recent versions of Edge. I'm going to go ahead and create a, a new project. I'm going to name it VLE Control. The first thing I'm going to do when my project is open is I'm going to go up to the gear icon in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to pick Project Settings. And there are a couple of different security settings for Bluetooth. I'm going to turn on No Pairing Required. One of the apps I'm going to be showing you does not really use pairing. The other app does use pairing, but sometimes it's a hindrance. It tends to work much better without it. Uh, sometimes if it's enabled, when you reprogram the micro bit, you lose your pairing settings, which can be really inconvenient. Okay, so now that I've done Bluetooth security settings, I'm going to go to the gear icon again and pick extensions. I'm going to pick the devices extension, which also includes the Bluetooth extension. Uh, this extension is mutually exclusive with using the radio on the blue, on the uh, micro bit. Um, so you can either use the Bluetooth functionality to communicate to apps, or you can use the radio functionality to communicate to other micro bits. I'm going to go ahead and remove the ability to communicate with other micro bits, and that'll add in the Bluetooth and devices support. So let's do an example using the devices support. So there are several different blocks we can use that are kind of interesting. The ones I'm going to focus on are the ones related to the gamepad. So I'm going to go ahead and throw those away. I'll look at my uh, basic blocks. Um, oh, we'll use an arrow. So when the uh, A button is pressed, we'll show the north arrow. We'll duplicate it. And when B is pressed, uh, we'll show the um, south arrow. Um, okay, notice that you can have actions based on whether the key is pressed or whether the key is released. So at this point, I need to program my micro bit. In order to do that, I'm going to uh, pair to my micro bit since this is the first time I've plugged it in. I'll click the dot, dot, dot. I'll click on pair device. It'll tell me to make sure my micro bit is plugged in, which it is. I'll click pair device and it'll pop up a window letting me just select my micro bit in my browser. I'll go ahead and hit connect. Okay. And at this point, we're connected to the micro bit. Hitting the download button should transfer code over to the micro bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You should only have to do the pairing process once. Notice that the uh, LED on the micro bit was blinking as it was being programmed. So at this point, my code is on my micro bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the apps look like and how they interact with the micro bit. Okay, I'm going to start by testing Martin Woolley's Biddy controller, which is available for both iOS and Android. There's a link down below. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Biddy controller. Uh, this runs in landscape mode. Uh, so first off, I'm going to click on options, and I'm going to make sure that dual D-pad is selected. I'm going to go ahead and hit back. And now I'm going to go ahead and scan for available micro bits. And it's only listing one, the micro bit that I just programmed. Uh, notice that the micro bit has a name, G-O-Z-E-V. We'll come back to that in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and click on that micro bit. And it shows me my D-pad. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and press the up button. And we see that the arrow on the micro bit comes on. And the down button, up, down, up, down, and so on. Um, notice that the app does have a little bit of a glitch. If you hold too long on one of these, it treats it as a photo. This is really a web view. So this is a little bit finicky, which is why I'm also going to do a demo of the other app. I'll go ahead and hit back, which disconnects from the micro bit. Okay, the official iOS micro bit app actually has a little bit better support for the D-pad, so I'm going to go ahead and run that as well. Again, link down below. Um, so when it starts up, the first thing we're going to need to do is choose our micro bit. This particular micro bit has not been configured to, uh, to work with this app. I have configured this for another micro bit in the past. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick the pair a new micro bit button down at the bottom, and it's going to walk me through the pairing process. Um, so it tells me to hold A and B and press and release reset. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Hold down A and B on my micro bit, press and release reset. Okay, and you'll notice on the screen it shows some sort of a unique shape. 
I'm supposed to match that shape up on the app. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So it looks like uh, three LEDs, two LEDs, uh, one, four, and two. Um, coincidentally, this um, is associated with that five letter name that we saw earlier. Uh, the pattern that's shown on the screen is used to generate letters that give each micro bit a, a somewhat unique name. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next and next and it will go ahead and try and connect to my uh, micro bit. Oh, we successfully paired, fantastic. Uh, notice there's the name of my micro bit in the app, G-O-Z-E-V, along with the one that had already been paired. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back. Uh, I'm gonna use the monitor and control feature. Uh, this feature does not work the same way in Android as of the last time I checked it, which was a, a several months ago. Um, Okay, so this app allows you to specify different types of controls that you want to interact with. Um, so first off, uh, notice on the bottom bar, it lists, it has settings, add, uh, the name of the micro bit that we're paired with, and the start button. So currently we're not connected to the micro bit, so the start button uh, will need to be pressed here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and change what's on the screen here. Um, so. I'm going to uh, look at my settings. My settings allow me to pick the number of panels that I can have. Uh, I'm gonna go down to just one panel for now, and I'm gonna change what that panel is. Uh, so I'm gonna add a panel, um, the gamepad panel. Okay, um, you could also uh, see what the LEDs on your micro bit are showing and use a few of the other panels to control or get feedback from the micro bit in various ways. Okay. So now that the app is up and running, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the reset button on my micro bit, which will send it back to normal operating mode instead of pairing mode. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the start button on my app. It will connect to my micro bit. And when I press the A button and let it go and the B button and let it go. Notice this doesn't have the uh, quirks that the other app had. Okay, when I'm all done, I could disconnect from my micro bit by hitting the stop button. Okay, uh, per my original goal, let's go ahead and uh, also control a servo while we're at it. Um, so I have a uh, couple of wires here. So this is a trio of alligator clips that end in pins uh, that I can easily connect onto the servo. Um, this is a servo that happens to work at three volts, which is the operating voltage of the micro bit. Most servos only operate reliably at five volts. So be very careful about that. It'd probably be best to use an external uh, motor controller board. Uh, there will be at least one example down in the links. I have not tried this out with the Bluetooth functionality. Sometimes there are conflicts with Bluetooth functionality, so buyer beware, but it looks promising. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, duplicate this. We'll uh, add in some commands for the C and the D button. Um, so I'm going to go down to the advanced menu here. I'm going to go to pins. I'm going to pick a uh, servo right. So I'm gonna connect the servo up to P0. Uh, we'll duplicate this and we'll also have the servo do something when we press D. Um, so we'll have it alternate between zero degrees and 180 degrees. Um, while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and do a demo of one of the other components uh, that we can use here. Um, oh, by the way, notice that my simulator has shown me how to connect up the, the servo. It's one of the things I really love about the micro bit environment. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to my palette. I'm going to go back to basic. I'm going to add back in a startup block. I'm going to look at the devices menu. Um, okay, so there are several other commands here. I'm actually not going to use any of those. I am going to go to the Bluetooth menu, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and add in the uh, LED service. That sounds kind of interesting. So this will give us some ability to view and update the LEDs remotely. Um, uh, you know what, one of the other things that's kind of handy here is knowing the micro bit's name. Uh, so I'm also going to go up to the basic palette. I'm going to select show string. I'm going to go down here to the uh, advanced section and into control. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the dot 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 menu and I'll see that device name is there. So I can program my micro bit so it'll go ahead and scroll the device name across the screen when it first starts up. It's kind of handy. Now that I've made my updates to my program, I'm gonna go ahead and hit download and download the code to my micro bit. Okay, my micro bit's starting up. You'll notice that the name is in fact scrolling across as we'd expect. Okay, so for the final piece of the puzzle, I'm gonna uh, go back to the app. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change my settings. I'm going to show two panels this time. Um, okay, so in this case, uh, it's automatically selected one of the panels. Um, so I could, I could pick different panels if I wanted. I could pick panels that would show an LED message, a uh, panel that lets me send a specific message to scroll across the screen, so on and so forth. Um, okay, in this case, this allows me to transfer something from the LEDs on the app to the micro bit. Um, okay, so in order to do that, I have to go ahead and connect the micro bit. So I'm gonna press the start button, which will connect to the micro bit. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the show button here, and it will transfer the pattern on the app over to the micro bit. I could uh, touch on the app and do a different pattern. It's uh, now indicating that this hasn't been transferred yet. I'll hit the show button, it'll transfer it over, and the app will update appropriately. Um, just like before, my A button does the up arrow, my B button does the down arrow. And if you remember, I configured C and D to interact with the servo. So I'm going to go ahead and press D, and my servo turns, and C, and it turns back. Okay, 